Welcome to the Kenny Hack. Hello everybody, thanks for watching. Please remember to hit like and subscribe. Help support these small channels that are putting out these how-to videos to share information with everybody. For this tutorial, we're going to be going over quite a few things I think that'll be helpful. But we'll get to those things as we go. So let's get started with the project. This is what we're starting with. This is a live edge slab that you can get at most any of the hobby stores. Um, it's made of basswood. And it's, it's what I usually typically like to use on all my wood projects. The problem you'll find with these is hidden underneath the label that you won't find out until you take it off will be one of these tree sphincters right in the middle of your project. And if you've ever burned over one of those, you'll know that they just burn solid black. You lose all detail, and it's just a good way to ruin an image. So typically when I'd find these, I would just set them aside. I, I couldn't really figure out a good use for them. I'd always save them in case I could find some image that I could maybe incorporate that dark knot into, a sunset image, or some joke deal I could make. But for the most part, I couldn't use it for photo quality stuff. That's when I came up with this idea. If I can't beat it, let's just try to cover it up. You can see here I've taped around the edge with some frog tape. It's always better to have your tape stay a little more on the dark outside ring than having the light ring stick through underneath the tape. You'll see why later. It just We're going to be painting over this slab to hide that knot. These are the two colors we're going to be using. Heirloom White in chestnut brown. Both are a satin finish. This first color probably took five good coats to get it a fairly even color. Every layer was power dried with a blow dryer to kind of speed up the process. I wish I would have filled in the knot with some wood filler. You can still see there's a little bit of a check mark where it's dug out into the center of that knot and that, it, that did come through the final image. If I'd have filled that with some filler, I don't think the knot would have been visible at all. Also, I didn't sand the wood before painting this layer. I wanted some of the wood grain to be able to come through all the painted layers. I didn't want it to be so smooth that it didn't look like it was on wood anymore. The second coat was done in a single pass using a 50% overlap method. And that means you aim the center of your stream at the bottom edge of your previous pass. This layer was also power dried, but I let it sit overnight until it was no longer tacky at all to the touch. Now let's look at the image. I kind of wanted to find one of these old fashioned photos. I thought the style of these photos would go really well with the live edge pieces of wood I use. And it'd just be something else I could offer to my clients. We all have these old-fashioned photos laying around. Some people might want to do more than just make a photocopy of them to give to their friends and kids after they've grown up. Maybe they'll want to be willing to spend a little extra money for something little more than a photocopy. First step, I brought the image into GIMP and rescaled it. Kept the 300 resolution. I needed the piece to be at least eight and a half inches wide. It only needed to be about ten and a half inches tall, but I'll crop that off in a, a further step. That image is then exported as a JPEG, and I'm going to send it over to Windows Paint to kind of do an extra step that normally I don't use because I've done it enough times. I don't really need to do this step, but it might be helpful for people that are new to editing. Here in Windows Paint, I added about three quarters of an inch to the right side and the bottom edge of the whole image and then re-centered the image into that white border. I then put this ellipse around the image and had the ellipse go to all the edges except for the bottom because like I said I didn't need the full 11 and a half inches. I only needed 10 and a half so I knew I could clip off three eighths of an inch at the bottom and still have plenty to work with. I sent that image back over to GIMP, and in order to delete out the background, you have to add an alpha channel to the image. To do that, just right-click on the image, and it'll bring up an icon box, and just click on that Add Alpha Channel. 
From there, you can just use GIMP's eraser tool and use that ellipse as your guide to delete around the outer edge. And all of that image would be outside of your print area. So it would just be burning up laser time to run out that far. So that's all we're doing this for, is just to help reduce the amount of laser time it takes to run this image. Once you do it a few times, you won't need the ellipse anymore on there. You'll just be able to freehand it in and knock the dog ears off the outside corners. And it'll, it only takes a few minutes, but it does save like 15 to 30 minutes off your burn time. This image has to be exported as a PNG file, so it maintains that transparent background. So your laser will not try to burn any image that's in that checkerboard area. Now we're over here in Lightburn. And when you're doing these odd shape projects and you don't have a camera set up with Lightburn, this little tool here, well basically anywhere you put the crosshairs, the laser will go to that mark. And if you have the fire button enabled, you basically can trace around the outside of your image and make sure your whole image is laying out onto the board where you want it and nothing's going to get missed or part of the image isn't going to get clipped off with the masking tape. That's just a very handy tool to use. So here's the image for you number hunters out there. I was running at 7,000 millimeters per minute, 52.5% on the max power, 10% on the minimum power. Had a negative image, 4% overscan, 300 DPI, and a 90 degree scan angle. But you're going to want to stick around because those aren't the right numbers. I left the max power about 10% low. I wanted to see what it would take if I burned an image and it came in underpowered, how much I'd have to run a second pass to achieve the proper depth. Here are my initial shape property settings. One gamma, negative 35 contrast, zero brightness, 100 on the first enhancement, 200 on the second enhancement, and zero on the third. These numbers are also a little bit off. I should have probably had about a 10 on the brightness. Now we're going through a time lapse of the burn. And actually I was doing this under a stop motion application where I could use my remote pen as the camera trigger. And I was sitting there trying to fire the camera at the right time when the arm was at the top of the image. Kind of cut down on that strobe effect and make these little time lapses not so annoying but it did mean I had to sit there through the whole burn and I didn't get every one of them but I was got most of the image and made a little nicer looking time lapse of it. You'll also notice when my burn is finished the head comes to the middle of the work area. Under your settings you can set it to go to a finished coordinate point. I don't have mine go back to the home point when it's done. I have it come to the center of the image. I've just found that when it returns home, it doesn't re-zero exactly down to the pixel exactly the same every time. But if you have it come back to the center of the work area without re-zeroing, you'll be able to rerun the project and it'll maintain the exact coordinates that it started with on the first one. It doesn't ever reset. You can see on her dress it's kind of blotchy looking. It didn't quite get all the way through the brown layer and turn it to mostly white. And that's kind of what I was trying to create. It was something that was a little bit underburned. And instead of scrapping the project, I wanted to see if I'd be able to recover it. Here are my second pass numbers. 7,000, 30% on the max, 0% on the min, everything else the same. This took several passes to determine this number. I started off at 10%, and that didn't, wasn't marking anything, ran it at 15, wasn't marking anything, went to 20. It was just barely starting to show up, so I jumped it to 30. And working on the very edge of the project, I was able to see that that was getting the dress all the way to the white layer. Under the shape properties, I also bumped the brightness up to 10, and that's probably where the original shape property should have been set. Here's a time lapse of the second burn. You'll see as it goes across, you can see her dress is just lightening up. 
with these settings, it was only really working on the white areas. It wasn't really changing anything on the darker shades. It was just such a low power setting that it, at the lower power, it just wasn't making any difference. It was basically only cutting the whiter areas deeper. And that's kind of what I wanted to do. If I wanted more detail into the darker side, I could have raised the minimum power from zero back up to around 10% and it maybe helped cut in the darker images a little bit more. Now it's time for failure show and tell. I've always thought there's just as much to be learned by failures as there is success. So this was like the first piece I tried. I was actually using a darker shade of brown. It was a espresso brown and it come out way too dark. It was still making decent images but it just wasn't a natural looking brown for this kind of wood. I wanted something that more closely matched to the bark color. Here's a close up of the finished project. You're going to find like everywhere that that frog tape, right where you make every little joint, some of the paint might seep under that joint and kind of get into that outer ring. You can go around with an X-Acto knife and kind of scrape it back. Or what I used was a colored pencil that closely matched that outer ring color and just kind of colored over the places that the paint kind of seeped through that joint. Well, that's the finished project. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Once again, please like and subscribe, and I'll see everybody on the next video.